Good morning interweb, let's world it. Now that we know how to create realistic climates for Earth-like planets, let's mess with temperature, shall we? Two sets of climate guidelines, one for your cold terrestrial planets and one for your hot terrestrial planets, coming up. So 20,000 years ago, during the last glacial maximum, Earth was about five to six degrees Celsius colder than it is today. And it looked like this. By derivation then, place your tropical rainforests between about 0 and 10 degrees north and south, but with slightly less coverage than you would do for a standard Earth-like planet. Modern Earth, cold Earth. Place your tropical savannas out to about 15 degrees north and south. In regions affected by warm currents, extend your savannas out to about 20 to 25 degrees north and south. Modern Earth, cold Earth. Place your hot deserts between 10 and 25 degrees north and south, and place your Hadley cell cold deserts between about 25 to 35 degrees north and south. In both cases, in continental interiors, rain shadows, and in regions affected by cold currents and or offshore winds. Also, cold deserts can be placed at altitude in hot desert zones. Modern Earth, cold Earth. The basic idea here is to divide your upper Hadley cell deserts into two, equator word hot, pole word cold. The transition zones, hot steppes and tropical monsoons, are similar to modern day Earth, albeit the monsoon regions are reduced a bit and the hot steppes don't form in pole word regions. Modern Earth, cold Earth. In the feral cell, place your humid continental climates between about 30 and 50 degrees north and south. Modern Earth, cold Earth. Check out that reduction. Place your subarctic continental climates between 40 to 60, 65 degrees north and south, skewing the zone towards areas affected by cold currents and offshore winds. Modern Earth, cold Earth. Place your Mediterranean climates between 30 and 45 degrees north and south in areas affected by cold currents, so just like before, but with an expansion of overall coverage. Modern Earth, cold Earth. Place your humid subtropical climates between 25 and 35 degrees north and south in areas affected by warm currents. Modern Earth, cold Earth. Place your oceanic climates between 40 and 55 degrees north and south in regions affected by warm currents. Modern Earth, cold Earth. Also at altitude in humid subtropical regions like here, 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 and here. Place your feral cell cold deserts in continental interiors and rain shadows. Deserts in general covered more of the earth during the last glacial maximum, so don't be too stingy with your hot and cold deserts. Modern earth, cold earth. Like before, place your cold steppes as thin transition zones around your cold deserts. Modern earth, cold earth. In the polar cell, place your polar ice caps above 45 degrees north and south, with the lowest extent being in regions affected by warm currents and or offshore winds, because glaciers need abundant precipitation in order to form. Modern Earth, cold Earth. Surround your polar ice caps with polar tundra. Modern Earth, cold Earth. In regions where you have low latitude ice caps, your tundra will be a thin transition zone. Around high latitude ice caps, your tundra will be more expansive. Either way, don't go below about 40-ish degrees north and south. And boom! One set of climate guidelines for plotting the biomes of a planet colder than modern day Earth. Done. Links in the description to this chart. Now, let's turn up the heat. So around 55 million years ago, Earth was hot seriously hot. So hot that the polar regions were covered in dense rainforests. Now that's pretty cool, but applying all the Köppen climate zones to an era so far back in time is pretty sketchy. It has been done, kinda, links in the description, but for our purposes let's derive our guidelines from something a little more modern. 120,000 years ago, during the last interglacial period, Earth was about 2 to 3 degrees warmer than it currently is, and it looked like this. Let's get deriving. Place your tropical rainforests between 0 and 10 degrees north and south, but with a significant reduction in overall coverage. Modern Earth, hot Earth. I mean, check out the difference on Sumatra. Place your tropical savannas out to about 15 or 20 degrees north and south. Along warm current coasts, go out to about 25 degrees north and south. Modern Earth, hot Earth. 
Place your hot deserts between about 10 and 30 degrees north and south in continental interiors, rain shadows, and in regions affected by cold currents and or offshore winds. Easy, right? Yeah, not so fast. Modern Earth, hot Earth. So to explain, during the last interglacial period, northern hemisphere deserts shrank while southern hemisphere deserts expanded. Why? Well, stuff changed, such that the northern hemisphere pointed towards the sun during perihelion. This made the northern hemisphere hotter, which created a greater heat differential between the land and the sea, which intensified monsoon circulation, which made things wetter, which meant that most of the Sahara looked less like this and more like this. The reverse occurred in the Southern Hemisphere. TLDR the Sahara greened and the outback became outback here. So the side which hemisphere will get greened. Hot deserts in that hemisphere will get broken up by hot steps. Assuming those deserts are situated on a very large continental landmass that passes through the 30th parallel. Hot deserts in the other hemisphere should be expanded. Now, of course, you can get a scenario where perihelion occurs during the equinox. So no hemisphere is pointing towards a star. In which case the data trail runs cold and my best guess is that no strong desert greening occurs. But that's just a guess. Do your sanity a favour and just ape Earth here. You'll thank me later. Anyways, the transition zones are again very similar to present day Earth, albeit the monsoon zone is reduced somewhat. And as just discussed, hot deserts also act as desert disruptors. Modern Earth, hot Earth. In the feral cell, the humid continental zone greatly increases. 35 to 65 degrees north and south should do the trick. Place your subarctic continental climates between 60 and 75 degrees north and south. Extend the region down to about 50 degrees north and south in regions affected by offshore winds and or cold currents. Modern Earth, hot Earth. Place your Mediterranean climates between 30 and 45 degrees north and south in regions affected by cold currents. Modern Earth, hot Earth. Note the expansion of this zone. Also note that Mediterranean climates appear between 45 and 60 degrees north and south along warm current coasts, and I don't really know why. Place your humid subtropical climates between 20 and 45 degrees north and south in regions affected by warm currents. Modern Earth, hot Earth. The transition between savanna and hot steppes slash hot deserts in North Africa was also humid subtropical, but this seems to have been fairly unique to North Africa which makes me think it's a consequence of the same mechanisms that green the Sahara. Whether this holds in general, I don't know. Place your oceanic climates between 40 and 60 degrees north and south, but limit it to a strip around the coasts. Modern Earth, hot Earth. Like before, place your cold deserts in feral cell continental interiors and rain shadows and at altitude in your hot desert zones. Modern Earth, hot Earth. Surround those cold deserts by cold steppes, again, just like before. Modern Earth, hot Earth. In the polar cell, place your polar tundra above about 60 to 70 degrees north and south. Modern Earth, hot Earth. And finally, place your ice caps above 70 degrees north and south, only in the interior of landmasses. Modern Earth, hot Earth. Hot model done. Links in the description to download both of these charts. Now, despite these guidelines being derived from specific temperatures, I would advocate using them across a more general temperature range. For world building purposes, that temperature range can be whatever you want it to be, as long as you can maintain suspension of disbelief. Seems legit? Eh, not so much. Legit? Definitely not. And look, I know that sounds super fudgy, but sometimes, for the sake of your sanity, you just gotta get down with the fudge. Climate zones of planets warmer and colder than modern day Earth. Done. Good morning, Twib. Special thanks goes out to Spencer O'Dowd, a viewer of this channel who compiled all the data from worldclimb.org for me. Without them, this video would not have been made. So much appreciated. Also, thank you for watching. Thanks to the patrons who make Artifact Scene a possibility. Special thanks to Andrew Shahil, Robin Hilton, World Anvil, Rip to Passe, John Huyer, A.E. Stevenson, Alexander Roper, and new top tier patron, Terra Hope you all enjoyed and until next time, it out.